we'll touch upon some of them tonight. Advantages to being where the Lord is, or for the Lord being where you are. This will be our 21st exposition of the Gospel of John. We're going to be in the second chapter, verses 5 through 8. Now at this point, the ministry of Jesus will begin. Up to this point, it's been introductory. He's been introduced to John the Baptist, introduced to the devil, too. <laughs> and he's going to begin to make known what he does and says. And summarizing the gospel of Christ, Luke and his his gospel referred to the treaties mm -hmm. that he made of all Jesus began both to do, mm -hmm. see for, yeah. been to do mm -hmm. and to teach. Not to teach and to do, to do. Uh -huh. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to do something in this text tonight, yeah. to do and to teach. Mm -hmm. In the place of treaties, other versions use account or book or scroll or narrative. Discourse, volume. The word treaties has a root meaning of a collection, uh, an orderly collection. Uh, yeah. uh, Jesus did a lot of things and said a lot of things, mm -hmm. so much so the world couldn't contain the books of just what he did. Yeah, and so Luke collected, see, mm -hmm. under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah. Luke collected some things, and he's writing it, and it is a rational yeah. collection. It's not written, this is not written to impress people. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is written to show people, yeah. to reveal something. Yeah. It's an orderly and focused account of what Jesus began to do and, mm -hmm. and teach. The gospel, in other words. Yeah. Now, unlike any other message, mm -hmm. the gospel has power. Amen. See, it is the power of God yeah. in order to salvation. Right. So if a person wants to be saved, it's the power that it's in the gospel. Amen. This is the word with which the Spirit works. Mm -hmm. There's not power given to any other word. Understand this. Amen. Not, no other word, no system of men, no body of thought, no collection of thoughts has power yeah. except the gospel. Amen. The writings of Moses don't even have this kind of power. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. The gospel is the power of God and its salvation. That's why it's called the word of his grace, mm -hmm. see, or the gospel of the grace of God. So we, we, must, we must endeavor to break loose from any temptation to us, subject ourselves to the gospel with only our intellect. You've got to, there's a temptation to do that. Particularly when you're living in kind of an ignorant age. We're living in kind of an ignorant age as far as the masses are concerned. Just kind of a, kind of a bunch of dumb people. That's, just, that's what it amounts to. Sometimes I'm... I'm confounded at the human stupidity. It's just it's amazing and ignorance. It's amazing, the level of it. It's absolutely amazing. And so it's in that kind of environment, it would be easy to like over intellectualize the scriptures. But you 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 want to lay power. If your intellect was sufficient, you wouldn't need power. See the fact that this is the power of God says we don't have, we don't have the resources we need by nature, <laughs> but the gospel is the vehicle. Yeah. It's a truck that delivers the power yeah. that we need. So that's, so that's what we're going to be viewing, uh, the beginning of Christ's first miracle. And what do you suppose you would do if you had your choice for the first miracle? What do you, what do you think you'd do? <laughs> Jesus did something private. How about that? Yeah. He did something that was for his disciples. Mm -hmm. 
That's the first thing he did. That's the first miracle he did. All right, it's uh, second chapter of John, verses 5 through 8. <laughs> they've run out of wine. It's wedding feast. They've run out of wine. Mary, his mother, said they're, they're out of wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Mm -hmm. Then his mother, <clears throat> she didn't go off and cry. <laughs> Some people would have often wept. Mm -hmm. They had Mary wept. That's what would happen. But his mother saith unto the servants, Whatever he saith, Unto you, do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You want to add those two words to your vocabulary. Do it. Mm -hmm. And then were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. You see, there that everything Jesus said happened, and whatever he yes. communicated, they did. <coughs> His mother. You know, he said, "Woman, what have I to do with thee?" What? what? What are you talking to me about this for? It's like saying, why did you, what were you looking for me for when you was 12? Well, why didn't you come here right off the bat? Why are you looking other places? See, but this didn't offend Mary. This didn't offend Mary. This, he says, what, what, am I taking orders from you now? Are you running things now? That's what he was saying. She didn't, it didn't bother her. She just turned to the servants and said, whatever he says, do it. Now, we don't have any record at all, ever, of Je what Jesus did at home. Not so much as a syllable. How he conducted himself at home for 30 years. Well, how did he live? What did he do? He was, a, he, he was called the carpenter, so we assume he worked in a carpenter shop, but we don't know anything. Yeah. That he did. But we're going to find out. Mary knew something about him. Mm -hmm. He made some kind of impression on Mary because of what she said here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary learned some things about Jesus when he was at home. We, the particulars aren't there. Why well, can't I, I think I can understand why they aren't there? It's because that would draw people's undue attention in a way, and it would be away from what he really came to do, see? Some people have thought he worked miracles and that. I, I don't know that he did. Mm -hmm. This It does say this was his first miracle. Right. I guess it means the pub, first public miracle. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing to note about Mary was how alert she was. <laughs> she wasn't, as they say, a spring chicken. Jesus is 30 years old. Uh -huh. So she's, a, she's, she's not an old lady, but she's a mature person, and she was very alert. Yeah. Our text says they, the wine was gone. Now, ordinarily, one would think, well, what does that have to do with Mary, you know? But she she's mm -hmm. picks up on this yeah. right away. Some of us surmise maybe these were relatives of that. Well, we don't know. We don't know what the relationship of Mary was here, but she's very alert. Mm -hmm. Very alert. Uh, how alert are you? When difficulties arise, I mean, how alert are you? Do you, do you go off in a corner and cry? Or do you, you, like, gripe? Or how alert are you? See, see how alert Mary was? Yes, amen. She goes right straight to Jesus right. and tells them, all she told them what they do, they're out of wine. She didn't go into any elaborate details, but she's alert. Was it going through my mind, and that's, you know, so many times in our lives, I, I, I think that is Jesus the first option? That's right. Is, do you go to him first? That's right. Is, you know, but, but I think as, as you get to know Jesus better and you see what he can do, you, 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 do. you do default oh, to yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah, you do yeah. default to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, well, if you don't default to Jesus, then you like there's a problem there. Yes. 
He is. He is first. Yes. <laughs> it isn't that Jesus ought to be first. Uh -huh. He is first. Yes. He's like a king of kings Amen. and a lord of lords and over all. So he is first. So it's wrong to think anything else first. Amen. Wrong. It's not a faith, though it's sin. I won't dwell on this, but I just, this, my mind's been stirred up a lot by some road words in Romans 7. It says we're married to Christ. It says that when a woman's married, she gives herself to someone, and she gives herself to someone else. She's an adulteress. You're married to Christ. You've given yourself to him. If you go to somebody else to get what Jesus gives, you are an adulterer. Amen. That's right. You've sinned. You've sinned. See, that's why we're against these recovery programs. So people wonder why we are. That's why. That's why, mm -hmm. because it is an act of adultery. Yes. And when you come to Christ, you marry him. Mm -hmm. You can't have two husbands. Yeah. Amen. You only have one. Mm -hmm. Well, Mary lived it out here. That's her first option. She went to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> she knew something about him that others didn't know. Nobody else went to him there, mm -hmm. not even one of his disciples. They, not, Mary... She knew something about Jesus because she lived with him, see? Yeah. She lived with him. Now, if you live with Jesus, you'll know something, things about him nobody else knows too. <laughs> so she just says... You'll be able to recognize when it's time for him that's, to that's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So she says to the servants, whatever he saith unto you, do it. That's a good word, isn't it? Yes. You could you could say that to anybody. Yeah, right. You can say that to your children. You can say it to your friends. Say it to someone in trouble. Say whatever Jesus tells you to do, like do it. Yes. Some other versions say, do whatever He tells you. <laughs> Phyllis Bible says, mind you do whatever He tells you, whatever it is, whatever He tells you. If you're a lame person laying on a pallet and He says, pick up your bed and walk. Do it. Yes, <laughs> if you're a blind man, you've got mud on your eye, and he says, go wash the pool of Siloam, do it. Yeah. Yeah. See? It's easy to say this if it doesn't look difficult. Mm -hmm. If you've got a withered hand hanging on your shoulder, yeah. and the Lord says, stretch it out, do it. Mm -hmm. See? He doesn't always ask you to do e <laughs> easy stuff. Mm -hmm. If he says, walk on the water, yeah. walk on it. That right? Amen. Whatever he says, do it. She's not only persuaded he will, Jesus will do something. She has confidence in Jesus. She knows he's going, he's going to do something. I, I don't know what it is, but he's going to do something. Yes. Now, see, we have several instances we raised tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you know Jesus, you know he, if you know about him, he sure knows about him. Uh -huh. yes. He's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Amen. We acknowledge we don't know what it is. Yeah. But he's going to do something. Yeah. But when he does something, he generally involves his people. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever he says, <laughs> do it. I, he, she knew it would be the right thing. Mm -hmm. It won't be something that can't be done. Mm -hmm. If he says do it, just the fact that he said do it makes it possible. Yeah. Amen. Can you see that, yeah. brethren? Yeah. Yeah. In the scripture, if it says like, be perfect, yeah. you said. Well, I can't. Well, see, the fact that he said that makes it possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff, isn't it? Yes. Perhaps it's well to say at this point that many people do not know what to do because they haven't spent much time with Jesus. Yeah. See, you. Right. So they're easily confused. They're easily discouraged. They're easily stymied. Mary spent time with Jesus thirty years at least that we know of. She spent with Jesus. But if you don't spend time with Jesus, believe me when I tell you, you will not know what to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But if you do, you'll do, you will know what to do. Some people can't give good advice because they haven't been with the teacher. Mm -hmm. yes. So don't even ask them. There's some people you don't even ask, what should I do? You don't even ask them. Uh -huh. Ask someone who's been with Jesus what to do. Yeah. 
See, people, there are a lot of people that can't give good advice because their well is too shallow. They've not got very much. They haven't been around Jesus very much. They don't know very much, like about problem things. They just, just don't know. This is not something they know about. So if you get like 50 of these people together, you still got the same thing. You got to find somebody who is acquainted with the kingdom of God. A scribe that is taught in the kingdom of God that can reach in his treasure and bring out something new and old or whatever is appropriate, see? <laughs> now notice the scope. <laughs> the scope of her advice. Whatever. See, that's become like a slang expression today so that it doesn't mean anything. See? See, this is... Satan's corrupted this word. So people say, whatever. See, it doesn't mean anything. It means let it go, you know. Well, that's not what it means in the scripture, whatever. Yeah. See, we don't want to let other people, don't even use the word that way. If you're a young person or somebody, don't be saying to me at any rate, whatever. Uh -huh. It's a corruption of the word. I don't want to hear it. Don't say what's up either. Don't say it to me. You may say it to other people. That's your business, but not, not to me. I don't like that kind of talk. You shouldn't either. What, whatsoever, whatever, the Bible word is whatsoever yeah. is equates to whatever. So let's, uh, let's see how God uses that word. Whatsoever. Whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Well, what, what, whatever was, whatever was written. <laughs> How's that? How about this? Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Whatever it is, whatever it is, if you if you don't do it because you believe, it's sin. That's what he said. What he said. Whether you eat or drink or what's Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. See, see, I'm showing you the scope of the word whatsoever. That it's like a limitless. It's a word without limits. <coughs> Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So don't tell me you don't have something good to think about. Don't, I mean, don't even say that. Yeah. You having trouble with your mind? I can get say, Lord, help me to use my mind so I can get into this whatsoever mode. Yeah, amen. So you got to say, this is like a filter. These whatsoevers are like a filter. <laughs> That your thoughts have to pass through and strains out all of the junk. Yeah, there's something when you're cooking and there's some uh, liquid, you're going to pass it through the filter. You don't yeah. just put it in. It's, there's yeah. stuff in there you can't put in what you're cooking. You've got to yeah. pass it through the filter. This Philippians 4, eight is like a filter. Yeah. Pass it through. And if it, come, if it comes to one of these, these are like a, like a hole it can't pass through. Ah, this is not... This is not uh, pure. Well, don't don't think about it. Yeah. This is this is not honest. Don't think about it. Uh -huh. See, whatsoever. Amen. Not that I speak in respect of what, for I've learned in whatsoever. <clears throat> there it is again. Uh -huh. Whatsoever state I am, there with be content. See, it's limitless. See, yeah. there, there's no boundaries to it. Whatsoever, it doesn't have a front and a back. It just uh -huh. doesn't have a top and a bottom. It just <laughs> yeah. whatsoever. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto man. See, so when she says, whatever, whatever, she admits, I don't, I don't know what he'll tell you to do, but whatever it is, do it. Now, some of God's professed people are too selective about what they'll do. They'll say something like, do I have to, do I have to really, uh, 
forsake not the assembling. It's got, no, no, you don't. You could be damned. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's the alternative. Uh-huh. See, you don't have a right to be selective when God says, yeah. do this, do that, yeah. go here, go there, don't go here, don't go there, don't do this. Mm. You can't be selective. Whatever. Whatever he tells you to do. See, there's this tendency, isn't there, to compartmentalize life. These are the things you got to, well, I have to go to work and I have to eat. I mean, but see, they never say I have to serve God or I have to fellowship with the brethren or I have to pray. Or it's, you don't hear people talking like that, but you do. they do have to do it. Whatever God says, pray without ceasing, whatever. Whatever he tells you. Do it now. Touch not the unclean thing. Whatever. Whatever he tells you now. Do it. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust of. Do it. Just do it. We know this is the kind of thinking you have to have because the first, the first commandment under the law was thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. Now you might or might not be surprised at how many professed Christians don't do that. And they'll even admit they don't do it. Say this is what we ought to do, but we don't, you know. Well, whatever he tells you to do, do it. He doesn't say, try to do it. (laughs) He says, do it. Now look. I know you've been on that pallet for 38 years. So just give it, a, give it a try. try. Try and get up. He just said, not only get up. He said, pick up your bed and walk. And then he says, and walk and tote that thing with you. So let's say you've got uh, you've got some kind of uh, indulgence that you've been wrestling with for a long time. And you, it's just about got you conquered. Pick it up yeah. and walk with it, having dominion over it. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's what you do. You just right. you just do it. You say, well, I don't know if I can't just do it. When you extend yourself to do it, you'll get the grace to do it. Right. Yes. <laughs> that man on the bed, I, I had a feeling he he was brother Jesus. He was he was he was ready to get up and walk. Yeah. He just needed that enablement. Yeah, yeah, that that that's all. Like we're, yeah. we're ready to do whatever Jesus tells us to do. Yeah. 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 See, the Lord says, cast your net on the right side of the ship. You, you do it. If he says, be not faithless, but believing. So I don't know if I could do it. Well, but if he says, don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Well, I don't know. Do it. You see, in the, in the extension of yourself to do it, that's when you get the grace to do it. Amen. You, you, everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Soon as you believe and you extend yourself to do what up to that point was impossible to do, mm-hmm. you'll be able to do it. If he says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, see, mm-hmm. you extend yourself, you, you won't get knocked down. Keep this in mind. If you cannot do what the Lord says, you cannot get what the Lord gives. Amen. It's like an inviolable rule. So I like it. Whatever he says, do it. And you know, uh, you know there's a lot of uh, professed Christians. And when I say professed Christians, I don't mean that they're not. I mean, that, I, mean I don't know if they are. There's a lot of professed Christians that they don't even know what God's told them to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They've been sitting under preaching where God, the band hasn't told them what God said they're to do. Yeah. They're just kind of do-gooders, be good neighbors and share your toys, and you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They haven't really been told. So Mary did say, what, he didn't, she didn't say, whatever you think he'd like you to do, she says, whatever he tells you, do yes. It shows us now that Mary wasn't necessarily talking about so many great 
miracles that she's seen That's him right. do around the house. That's right. Mm -hmm. But she's been impressed by the things yeah. that Jesus has had to say. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. He's always yeah, had he some did. good things to say. Yeah. So whatever he says. So a lot of people put a lot of <clears throat> emphasis on the miracle part of it. Which yeah. is, he did do a miracle. Mm -hmm. But really, uh, we can say that Mary's putting emphasis on what Jesus says. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah. It doesn't say whatever he does, look at it. Yeah, uh -huh. it says whatever he says. Yeah. Really, they they did the doing. I mean, you know, Amen. Like you just said. <laughs> Amen. All right, that's now that's the stage. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is what we got to work with now. A wedding feast. Mm -hmm. Jesus' mother's there. Jesus is there. His disciples are there. They're on a wine. Mm -hmm. All right, now what what do we got to work with? That that's a situation. What do we got to work with? And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. All right. We survey the room. We see six stone water pots. That's, that's what we got to work with. Yeah, uh -huh. <clears throat> but when someone omnipotent is there, yeah, that yeah. changes the whole yeah, situation. Amen. Jesus can work with whatever's available. Yeah. Even you. Do you believe that? He can work whatever. Whatever's available. That's because he is overall. He really is. And there's not anything or anyone who will not yield to him. What about the people who don't obey him? Well, he can take them out with a word. He could just say, don't be, and that'd be it. So they're still subject to him, even though they don't know it. Now, the same thing is true of both circumstances and things. They're under Jesus' control. Let's say it's bread. That he doesn't have to have a truckload of bread. He, does, he just has to have some bread. He doesn't have to have a boatload of fish, just some fish, two, fi two fish. Because we're dealing with someone omnipotent. See, we're dealing with someone who's not limited. You're limited. He isn't limited. Amen. Yes. Yes. It may have appeared Saul of Tarsus didn't yield to Jesus, but all Jesus had to do was appear to him. And That's that wasn't right. That's an issue anymore. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. May not be winds. See, he, when Je Jesus can do what he wants with wind. Yeah, right. you, you try it. Yeah. Or waves. Or he, you can give him a colt that's never been ridden. He can get right up on him and the colt will just carry him. Because he's omnipotent. See, if Jesus is in the house, this changes. Yes, amen. This changes everything. When we pray, now you can pray different ways. You can pray with a circumstance dominating your thinking. Or you can pray with the presence of the Lord dominating your thinking. Yeah, there's no limitation to the Lord. He does whatsoever he will. So now the only issue becomes, does Jesus want to do this or not? Yes. If he does, he can do it. Just bringing this up uh, That's right. to him. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, reminding him. Of, it's like a savor to him. Yeah. Yeah, we are cut. We... We've got to have this, whatever he does, it tells you to do it. We have this attitude. Now, if someone seeks advantages other than the Lord's presence or goes someplace else for a help, it, this is wrong. Yeah. This is wrong. You say, does this mean I shouldn't go to a doctor? Well, there's no substitute for thinking, you know. That's right. No, that's not what it means. But it means that shouldn't be your first uh -huh. yeah. resort. Mm -hmm. See, he can use whatever. Yeah. He says to Moses, so what do you got in your hand? He says, a rod. Well, use that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're talking about facing an Egyptian army <laughs> yeah. with a stick. Mm -hmm. See? That's Jesus. That, if you believe Jesus, he can use whatever you got. Amen. Maybe a, like a sling. So I got this, this sling. And my face is this 10 foot tall giant with armor. This is, we'll, we'll, we'll use that. 
We'll use that. It'd be a little bottle of oil. A little pot of oil, and you got this massive debt. Oh, we'll pay it off with that. Little bottle of oil. Might be a jawbone of an ass. Oh, the, it's a dead donkey out here to decay. There's a bone, a jawbone. We'll, we'll use that. You, got a, you say you got a thousand foes to fight? Well, see, we're talking about omnipotent Lord. These records are not given here just to be children's stories. That's not what they're there for. But you know, a lot of people, they, they just read these to the kids. Yes, well, Justin. The scripture, 1 Corinthians one twenty eight, and the base things of the world, yeah. <laughs> and the things which are despised have God chosen, Amen. and the things which are not, to bring not to naught the things that are. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's say you're faced with some poison waters. God can enable a person to just take a little salt. What have we got, have we got available here? Some salt. Mm -hmm. Throw that in there, that heal the waters. Yeah. That's 2 Kings 2.20. Or maybe a a, 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 a Terminal boil, a boil, you're dying of this boil. Uh, take a lump of figs and put it on there. See, when the king's in the house, whatever's available can be used. In this case, six pots, stone pots. That's what we're <laughs> Stick six stone jars. No one ever thought these six stone jars could be used in a miraculous way. They just didn't look like it. Who ever heard anything like this uh, before? They weren't made of precious metal or precious stone. There was nothing extraordinary about them. Just ordinary vessels for ordinary Jewish use. But when the Lord's in the picture, that, that changes everything. It's good that we learn to think of his presence yes. as making everything possible. Yeah, amen. Just a, you know, I'll tell you that you have to culture this kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. You won't naturally think this way. I mean, you may know the Bible says this, but we're not talking about knowing the Bible says this. Mm -hmm. We're talking about being able to, to, to think naturally like this. The Lord's here. Yeah. Anything is possible. Or to put it another way, with him, nothing shall be impossible. Yes. Six ordinary stone water pots. After, and, and they were, they were uh, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, they were water pots after the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Some versions say the Jewish custom of purification, the kind used for Jews for ceremonial washing and so forth. Now, this isn't talking about the washings that were under the law. It's not what he's talking about. The first covenant, the law, the scripture says, stood in diverse washings, mm -hmm. Hebrews 19. That's not the washings he's talking about. John is careful to state they were according to the purifying of the Jews. He doesn't say according to the purifying of the law <laughs> of the Jews. Now later where God favors us with an explanation to this elsewhere that these, this, these washings were traditional washings. Matthew 15, 3 brings it up. Some people came to Jesus and said, why do you also and said, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. See, it's a, tradi it's a tradition. This is a, these pots were used for a traditional mm -hmm. washing. Some versions say ceremonial, but it was not law ceremonial. It was tradition ceremonial. Jesus refuted the dignity of the tradition, saying, why do you transgress the commandment of God with your traditions? He said, this tradition was not one honored in heaven. Mark, in his record of this occasion, provides further information on this tradition. This is from Mark 7, 3 and 4. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not holding the tradition of the elders, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold 
as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a tradition yeah. that we're talking about here. See, a tradition had pervaded the religion yeah. of the Jews. So yeah. they, all of a sudden it was equated. Yeah. It was equ equated with Jewry, uh -huh. yeah. which was wrong. Mm. Jesus will use these vessels for other purposes. Yes. If they were used for the law, he wouldn't have used them for another purpose any more than he allowed Belshazzar to use holy vessels for another purpose. He will not be transgressing anything Moses taught. Each one of these vessels contained two or three firkins apiece. Now a firkin is a liquid measure of eight and seven-eighths gallon. That's one firkin, eight and seven-eighths gallon. So two or three firkins is estimated somewhere between 20 and 30 gallons of liquid fit at each one of these six vessels. So six jars from 20 to 30 firkins would hold from 120 to 180 gallons, or 24 five-gallon cans. Or if you like it to attain a 20-gallon tank, tank of gas, it'd be six uh, Six tanks of gas, six to eight tanks of gas. He's just a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of a liquid. <laughs> I take Jesus out of the picture, and this magnifies the problem. Yeah. We got these vessels that hold an enormous amount of liquid, but we don't have any th thing except water to put into them. So this magnifies the problem if you take Jesus out. Mm -hmm. Now I've observed over the years that there's a marked tendency for professed Christians to reason without considering Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've noticed this for years, and it's had been a source of uh, agitation to me. I've been to a lot of ministers' meetings, and almost all of them, they reasoned and thought and talked out problems without Jesus in mind, almost to a meeting. This was the case. Board meetings, college meetings, all kind of religious meetings, but they thought without Jesus in mind, which means all they had was six stone water pots. That's, that's it. Invariably, those who do not live by faith think of resources as something that they have seen work already. Of course, it's something that's marketed or sold most of the time. But what are you going to do here? This is something that's never been seen before. When they were out of wine, nobody said, bring me the six stone pots. I mean, no, this had never been seen before. All right, now what will such people who think without Jesus in mind, what will they think of this scenario John has presented? A lot of people are present. It's a wedding feast when you don't want things to go awry. Wines run out. None's available. We scan the facility, and there's six stone water pots. It looks like there's no solution. But Jesus is not only Jesus' mother is there. So she doesn't think this way. She goes to what she felt was a valid source. This tells you the way Jesus lived in her, in her home. This tells you something about how Jesus lived. Jesus is there, and that, that changed everything. Now, that's, this is something I know that it, this is something that we have to continue to work on, being aware of the Lord's presence. Now, though, you don't feel it in your flesh. I mean, it's not like a tingling in your toes or something like this. This is not how you tell. Yeah. In fact, you can't really explain this to anybody who's not in Christ. You can't explain it, but there is there is a feeling yeah. Yeah. that you have that you, like the woman that was healed of her bloody flux, she felt in herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody else knew, but she knew. Yeah. She knew. Yeah. She could tell. And you can tell. If you live close to Christ, you can kind of tell mm -hmm. when he's there. Amen. Like he promised he'd be. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots. Jesus said to them, <coughs> some versions say, <coughs> he said to the servants, or the servers. And a significant number of the versions do say he said to the servants. <coughs> now we know this is the case because later it says the servants that drew the water knew it. So it was, it was. <laughs> some people feel it was the disciples. Now people feel this, these were the disciples that were with Jesus, but they weren't servants. They were, they were guests. They, and Jesus wasn't in charge. He wasn't the governor of the feast. Well, technically he was the governor of the feast, but he wasn't the one who was managing the feast. <coughs> <clears throat> fill the water pots with water. Remember Mary said, whatever he tells mm -hmm. you. Now that doesn't seem to be associated with wine at all. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. fill the water pots with water. What are we going to do? Do a lot of washing? You know what? Who knows? Who cares? Who knows? She said, do what he tells to do. <laughs> fill the water pots with water. This suggests they were empty. <clears throat> if they weren't empty, in my opinion, they would have emptied them mm -hmm. first. Now notice of what authority Jesus speaks to the servants. This is the first time we have on record, aside from him insisting that John baptize him, mm -hmm. this is the first time that he's like delivered in, delivered in order. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fill the water pots with water. That's the first time now. We're being introduced. See, this is not a carpenter talking. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah everybody... Yeah. Everybody says this is not a carpenter dog. This just isn't one of the local yokels, as they would say. Fill the water pots up with water. <clears throat> See, he, his word was with power. So that it dispelled any question about whether or not they should do it. Later, when he came down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and taught on the Sabbath days, they were astonished at his doctrine, for the scripture says his word was with power. When you hear Jesus speak, it moved you into action. It made you think about yourself. It made self-examination. It made you want to do what he said. It was, that's power. See, it wasn't like persuasive power. It wasn't that kind of power. A lot of people can, pers can persuade you. I remember this... Uh, young man, he was a Pentecostal preacher, and he had been bilking the people for years. What was that man's name? Neil. Pardon? Neil. Which, which man are you talking about? One in Florida? Where? No, the Pentecostal man that be, became a, was converted and made a film. Oh, Moses. Marjo. 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 He was <laughs> Marjo for was a was a from five years old he was a national evangelist, mm -hmm. worldwide fame, mm -hmm. and he, he was a he was actually wasn't a believer at all, mm -hmm. but he finally he came out with a film that exposed what he was, mm -hmm. and it set the Pentecostal world on fire. I remember what had happened in the seventies. Boy, it turned the thing upside down. Yeah. And so he was the kind of person that could t convince anybody to do something. So he was on a national television show, and they brought out a dilapidated cow. And he sold that cow for $5,000 with sheer, sheer hype. Now, there's people like that in the world. They just have a just magnetic... Per That's not what Jesus did. That's not the kind of power. When he said his word was with power, that's not what we're talking about. Because these other people that have these persuasive powers, it wears off. Just give it up a week or two and it wears off. His word was with authority. Later the people said, they heard Jesus speak, what a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Luke elsewhere, he says, he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. See, when people heard the real Jesus speak, 
It was penetrating. Yes, amen. It would convict people. It yes. would make Pharisees mad that wouldn't get mad otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. See? It humbled down people, wouldn't get humble otherwise. His word is with, with amen. power. Perhaps it should be noted that when the words of Jesus are heard with people that have ears to hear, men immediately associate his word with power yeah. and authority. Uh -huh. You can hear Jesus' words by reading them in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Be not troubled. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. that word's with power. And if you know who says it, it will it'll actually will calm your soul. Yet if you don't push that from you, that perception from you, if you don't do this, if, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have this impression, Jesus is speaking to me, mm -hmm. it, it has this convicting power, this illuminating power. If you don't push that from you, you will be able to do what he says. Amen. Yes. There, there are words that are, are just about stuff and things, that, but whenever people are confronted with truth or lies, now they may be wicked in themselves and thrust the truth from them, but they're affected by confrontation with truth and lies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something in us that we either have to resist it or receive it. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, this, whatever he tells you, do it, that all presumes what we're saying here. It's, it's not just that pay attention to what he says and just make yourself do it. It's not, it's more on listen. Here's what Jesus, Jesus has spoken about you and me paying attention to what he says. He's spoken on this subject. These are familiar texts, but let me read them. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, see, he it is that loveth me. <clears throat> he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. So that's, that's how Jesus feels. Yes. Here's another. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. See? That's even greater than our text. Yes, yes, that goes beyond our text. Uh -huh, yes. Now the issue comes is, do you believe that? <clears throat> Amen. Or is it easy to forget what Jesus said? Or do does the person know what Jesus said? Uh -huh. See? Yeah. So Jesus spoke it on this subject. So what did they do? Jesus said one time, one time, yeah. he said, fill up the pots. They filled them to the brim. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit is careful to point this out. It was, it was to the brim yes. so that nothing else could be in. Yeah. One person said so that someone else wouldn't put some wine in there and color the water and fake it out. See, uh -huh. no, nothing else could be put in to the brim, yeah. to the brim, filled entirely. And what about words about filling that have been given to us? Yeah. Yeah. There's certain things we're, we're to be filled too, you know, to the brim. Yeah. So you give yourself a little test, see if you have. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. <laughs> Has that happened? I mean, is it to the brim? You have to examine yourself. Is it, is it to the brim? Mm -hmm. Be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18, or is it, is it to the brim? Are you or aren't you? That's for you to answer. I got my answer for myself. I can't answer for anybody else. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What is that, to the brim? Do you really think a little bit out of the bottom of the cup is enough? Don't you know that there are people that when it comes to the knowledge of the will of God, they just have a little bit down at the bottom someplace. Don't you know that that's not acceptable? Yeah. Be filled. Amen. When you start out, your vessel is, isn't is like a 30 firkin one. It's about to be a one or two firkin yeah. one when you start out. But you fill it up. Yeah. And pretty soon the vessel, he'll enlarge it. You'll be like a 10 firkins in it. Yeah. 
Pretty soon, pretty soon, you got a lot of firkins in it. But then whatever you got, whatever your capacity is, fill it up. Don't be empty. Fill it up. They fill them to the brim. Christ would not scrape the bottom of the bucket, so to speak. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. I've heard some sermons that were you had to reach way down in the vessel and they scrape something off the bottom, and that's what they gave us. That see, that's unacceptable. He didn't say to give anything to the governor of the feast until it was full to the brim. Then he said, now, <laughs> draw out now, yeah. I'm, I'm reminded of these sermons that we hear on, on, an av on a normal basis around here. It's like that, that my cup runs <coughs> over, where the comments are just pouring out, and it's like you can't contain the thought. That's right. Just the thought of the message That's is right. the services are extending. That's right. <laughs> Overflow, yeah. overflowing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. See, there wasn't. You, it wasn't appropriate to draw out until it's filled to the brim. You draw off the top, not off the bottom. See. So they uh, they did that. The things of the saints of God should come from a vessel that is full. So don't, don't, I don't know that anybody does this, but if anyone does, then this word is appropriately addressed to you. Don't spend some last minute trying to rustle up something to give to the saints. Mm -hmm. Keep your vessel filled. Yes, amen. Keep it filled. With all the fullness of God. How about that? That she might be filled with all the fullness of God. That doesn't mean all of God gets in you. It means all that's in you is of God. See, it's, it's just, <laughs> you've got to see, if you've got a one-quart vessel, it's got to be, everything in there has got to be God. Uh -huh. If you've got a 50-gallon vessel, everything in there has got to be God. Amen. When we're filled with the new wine of the Spirit, and with spiritual understanding and wisdom, there's a certain wonder that happens that's without confusion. Now, you, if you've been enlightened and something has, like, dawned on you, you know that it hasn't, what dawns on you doesn't confuse you. It actually clarifies, stabilizes you. That's from the top. That's because it's, it's filled up to the brim, see. Amen. And if a person is like a crackpot, then he can't hold anything. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like a broken vessel, mm -hmm. a bag that has holes in it. Just, just nothing can stand. it. There's some people, you could, you could pour in, you know, 50 firkins. You could pour it in, it just leaks out. Yeah. See, th carnal thoughts, carnal propensities, friendship with the world they're like gigantic holes in the vessel uh -huh. so if even if a legitimate outpouring occurs it it, it gets away mm -hmm. they can't keep it mm -hmm. it was stone pots yeah. That's right. <laughs> you can hold whole things the light of the truth sheds illumination mm -hmm. on everything else you got yeah. see a, a a scribe that's taught in the kingdom of God has in his treasure things new and things old. Mm -hmm. and when he puts in things new, it sheds further light yes. on things old. Amen. See? Yeah. But this is like a full, this is like a full vessel view. Yeah. This is not a half full uh -huh. vessel view. Yes. Vessels be, being pure also, that they were after the manner of the purification of the yeah. Jews. That these vessels were in a, they were in a state of cleanness, so they could be more readily used. Yeah, that's right. They mm -hmm. didn't have to go through a long process of making them clean and making yeah. them fit. And that, that we want to also live in a state of cleanness and be yeah. pure before the Lord so that we can more readily be used in whatever he would have us to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to get into this in the, either our next exposition, but 
What Jesus does, he takes the ordinary and he transforms it into extraordinary. There are new things given to you. I understand that. But he takes the ordinary things, things that you, they really, they were true, but they weren't doing anything. You know, and he transforms water into wine. So he takes what's ordinary. And he doesn't want, listen, here's something else. The Lord Jesus doesn't want the ordinary to be distributed. Yeah, uh -huh. The ordinary has got to be turned into the wine, yeah. then distributed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. See, there's too much ordinary stuff uh -huh. being communicated yeah. to the people of God, believe me. So it's got to be it's got to be transformed first. Amen. Well, those are some things about that text that I'm sure you'll see a lot more in it, but... You see a lot about, she knew a lot, Mary knew a lot about Jesus just because she is with him. Yes. Yeah. And you will learn, you will learn a lot about Jesus just by being with him. Yes. Amen. And you'll pick up, uh -huh. if you're with Jesus enough, you'll pick up, he can do anything. Yes. See, you, you'll pick up on that. Amen. And believe me, that's a good thing to know in this world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else have something to say, something yeah. to add, Brother Bob? You can live on bread and water in this world, but, you know, with Jesus, it, yeah. it's living on, on wine. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's an extraordinary, it's an, ab an abundant life. Fat things. Yeah, fat things. Amen. Wine on the leaves. On the, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, go ahead and word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this record and for the power of the Lord Jesus and his speech. Yes, amen. We ask for grace to continue to hear his word attentively, devotedly, and to have our vessels filled at all times. In Jesus' name, amen.